Hi, let's talk about CRV, the Curve Dow token, currently at $3.79, going up slightly today by almost 3%. It's actually one of the best performing cryptocurrencies in the last seven days. So these are the top 100 coins and CRV went up by 8.3%. So we are now looking at market rank 74 with a market cap of approximately 1.6 billion. Now, does it make sense to buy CRV? Is CRV a good investment? Will this positive momentum here continue? And if yes, for how long? So first of all, you should know what CRV, what Curve actually is. Curve is a decentralized exchange where you can swap all kinds of crypto assets. It has started out with swapping stable coins such as DAI versus USDC. So you might want to do this, for example, when you've got a certain token that you want to buy on a decentralized exchange that's got a liquidity pool only in, say, DAI, right? You want to swap, say, your OM fork token against DAI but you're currently holding USDC. And so you simply swap this on Curve because the costs on Curve are pretty low, the swapping fees. So that's why you might want to do this. And what you can also do on Curve is you can put your money into a liquidity pool. So you can deposit, say, your DAI or USDC, and then you can earn a reward on this. So in this case, I've got here a little bit of money deposited. And so when I now withdraw that money from Curve, I don't just get return in the stable coins, I also get return in the CRV token. And in this case, because this is on the Phantom blockchain, I get a little bit of wrapped Phantom as well. So what kind of returns can you get? In this case, for example, for the stablecoin pool, we can get 1% per annum on the stables, right? On the stable coins. And on top of that, we also get 2.4% return paid out in CRV tokens and 4.4% paid out in wrapped phantom. So your total return is something like 8% or so per annum. Now, what's nice about Curve is that it doesn't just work with one blockchain. There's quite a few blockchains on this. It started out obviously with Ethereum, but since then it branched out to other blockchains and it does make sense to use Curve with other blockchains, not with Ethereum, simply due to the gas fees, right? If you're not depositing hundreds of thousands of dollars, then you want to use a blockchain that's got lower gas fees that doesn't eat up all the rewards you get over here. These are returns before gas fees, right? You still have to pay the gas fees for doing the transactions. I personally like to use Curve quite a bit, actually. It's been around for quite a while. The code has been audited. And so one might argue that within the DeFi space, Curve might be one of the safest bets you have. And it seems like the market is also recognizing this. This is the total value locked on DeFi Llama and Curve is at number one. And this is what the Curve total value locked looks like. So a very nice positive trend, continued adoption. Of course, the user interface looks a little bit geeky, but you do get used to it after quite a while. Now, does it make sense because of that adoption to buy the CRV token? This is the long-term US dollar chart. And one thing first to note is simply the volatility here, right? You invest into a token with market rank 74. The market cap is way lower than, say, for Ethereum or for Bitcoin. And so you get quite a bit of potential downside risk, right? Temporarily, we went down by 95% in terms of US dollars for Curve. But what you're actually interested in isn't necessarily the US dollar valuation. Because the question is, what's the risk to reward? You take on more risk, you take on more potential downside, the volatility is higher, but you want to get this risk compensated versus your other alternatives, which are, for example, Bitcoin or Ethereum. And this is now the Curve price divided by the Ethereum price. So how is the Curve token relatively doing? Because it doesn't make sense to take on more risk when you don't get the compensation for that risk. And so it looks like we are pretty much in a sidewards trading range, at least after this initial crazy drop over here. Since then, we are pretty much in a sideways trading range and we are not particularly cheap here, right? One might argue if we continue to somewhat still simply keep the pace with Bitcoin, that the upside is maybe 30%. The downside, however, is 78% underperformance versus Bitcoin. That's at least what I think makes more sense to look at than simply to look at the US dollar chart over here. You could also compare Curve to Ethereum. So this is now the Curve price divided by the Ethereum price. It looks a little bit better, but not by much, right? A potential downside of, say, 39%, a potential upside that is a doubling. But again, this seems to be a sideways trading range. I don't think it makes much sense to try to trade this. I think it's way better 
to invest into something that tends to outperform over the long term. And the reason for this lackluster performance is probably simply the utility of the Curve token, of the CRV token. This adoption here is phenomenal, right? It's really great. It's a true success story. But with the CRV token, you don't get any benefits. You don't get a higher APY. You don't get access to specific pools as you otherwise wouldn't have. The only real use case of the CRV token right now is governance to decide on where the project should be going in the future. And because of that, there is not a lot of demand, right? Because of that, all this supply that you get paid out by staking, by providing your money into this liquidity pool, all this supply, it gets sold and potentially swapped for something that might be less risky or that might have more potential. Now, another way to look at this is correlation. Because cryptocurrencies, they tend to be correlated to one another. They tend to move in the same direction at the same time. So when Bitcoin is crashing or when Ethereum is crashing, it tends to also pull down the altcoins or vice versa. If a boom is happening, altcoins, they tend to boom as well. And so we can measure this with a correlation coefficient when it's at one, two assets always move in the same direction. When it's at minus one, two assets always move in opposite directions at the same time. And so here we have the correlations of CRV to Bitcoin and Ethereum, and they are at 0.43. So these are the daily return correlations and 0.52 for Ethereum. It's a little bit less than the average correlation of the altcoins to Bitcoin and Ethereum, but still definitely worth considering. And since the correlation with Ethereum is higher than with Bitcoin, which is by the way true for almost all of those altcoins, we should look at how Ethereum is likely going to perform. And what I like to look at are two moving averages, the 23 and the 39 day moving average for Ethereum. So the 23 is in light blue, the 39 is in dark blue. And currently the price is below those two moving averages. So the idea is you are in the market whenever the price is above the moving average. And the same is true the other way around. You want to be outside of the market whenever the price is below the moving averages. So you would sell over here, you would stay flat with your capital, and then you would buy back in again here when we cross the moving averages. The reason why I take the 23 and the 39 day moving average is simply because of a back test I've done. You can see this in another video on this channel. When you do this kind of a trading strategy and you try to find out the optimal length of that moving average, you will see the 23 and the 39. They tend to give quite nice returns. So this is how this looks like in the back test, right? We are below the moving average. We are completely in cash. And then we enter the market again once we are above the moving average. And so the portfolio line is higher when you follow that trading strategy than when you simply just buy and hold Ethereum. So that's the 23 day moving average back test. And that's the one for the 39 day. So I'm toggling between those. They both work pretty well. And so currently we are below those two moving averages. And so I tend to believe that Ethereum is likely going to go further down from here, right? Of course, the strategy is not perfect. It does have some failed signals, but that's simply the tendency. That's what the backtest suggests. And so would I buy Curve at the current price? Probably not, but that's not necessarily because the price is going to decline or because the application is any bad or the adoption is any bad. It's simply because of tokenomics and because of the lack of outperformance versus safer alternatives. And of course, the lack of real use cases for the CRV token, at least at the current stage. So this price, it might very well go further up from here, but I think there are better opportunities out there. And so if you ask me, do I currently accumulate more CRV than the tokens are already received from staking? The answer is no, I don't. If you enjoyed this video, you might want to check out the premium membership that's at thebitcoinstrategy.com. There's daily market updates on Bitcoin, on Ethereum. There's also a private Telegram channel where you can ask me any questions. And of course, tutorials on technical analysis, on mindset, quite a lot of value that you might want to check out. If you haven't yet, please like this video as well. It will help the channel grow. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. I publish videos regularly. Last but not least, there's also a public Telegram channel. That's the Bitcoin strategy channel. You can simply search for this in the Telegram app. We have more than 1000 people over there. Alternatively, you can also just click the link in the video description. See you next time. Bye bye.